Welcome to r slash am I the jerk, where Karen completely loses it because OP won't change her tire for her. My sister is furious with me because I won't change a tire for her, but I've offered to teach her how to do it numerous times. I, 38 male, have a half-sister who's 27. She and I have the same mom, but different dads. Neither of our dads have ever been very involved in our lives, so I have kind of been the only male role model she's ever had. We never had much money growing up, so I started taking odd jobs around 14 to 15 for extra spending money. Yard work, paper boy, shoveling, etc. We lived in a smaller town and I ended up meeting a few middle-aged guys who were kind of do-it-all handymen and they took me under their wing. They taught me a lot about tools, cars, carpentry, you name it. I was never good in school, but these two were a wealth of information and I ate it up. I worked hard in my 20s and I was able to purchase my sister a cheap used car when she turned 16. I tried to teach her everything I felt she should know about basic car stuff, but she had no interest whatsoever. She just wanted to drive around with her friends. She would always say, why do I need to know how to do ABC when I can just pay someone to do it? No matter how many times I offered to show her how to change the oil or swap a tire, she just never took me up on it. She has since purchased a newer car of her own and I've helped her with a couple of basic repairs to avoid having to take it to a shop. Each time I offered to show her what, how, and why I'm doing something, but she refused to even attempt to learn. She's very much a girly girl and has zero interest in that sort of thing. Last Saturday, I got a call from her at about 10 p.m. She had just gotten off work and got a flat tire on her way home. She lives in the boonies and works 20 miles away and she was stranded about halfway home. It was also pouring rain. She was upset because she didn't know what to do and wanted me to come help her. Problem was, I had spent that evening drinking with some friends, so no way was I driving there. I told her that she would have to either call a tow truck, roadside assistance, or wait there until morning when I could drive to her. None of these options were acceptable to her and she got upset with me. She asked if I could talk her through changing a tire over the phone and I laughed. This made her even more upset. I told her that I've offered over a dozen times to show her how to do that sort of thing but she's always refused. I told her that I would gladly show her the next day but no way was I going to try to talk her through it right now. She hung up but she did text me a few minutes later to tell me that a friend is coming to pick her up. No thanks to me. The next morning, my mom called me and told me that my little sister called her and told her what had happened the previous night. She told me that she's disappointed in me for not helping my sister and that I shouldn't have laughed at her when she was upset because it only made things worse. Shortly after, my little sister texted me that I was a jerk for not doing more to help her and that I was a jerk for laughing at her when she was in trouble. Not the jerk. You tried many times to teach her, but she just wasn't interested. Her lack turned around to bite her. Of course it's funny. She wasn't really in any trouble. She could always pay someone to come help her. In fact, the minimal forethought to have an auto club membership would have been all she needed. Tell your sister she's the roof don't leak when it don't rain type. She's old enough to be able to plan ahead. I have roadside assistance because I can't physically change tires due to a health issue. But to be honest, I never wanted to do it either. So if she isn't going to do it, she needs to be able to take care of it herself. Not the jerk. You mean the little princess is upset you didn't take care of everything for her. Wow, shocker. Sure, if you'd been sober, laughing would have been over the top. Not your fault for your state of mind. Poor planning on her end does not constitute an emergency on yours. She's 27, take some accountability for not learning in the previous 11 years. This is exactly why people who don't know how to do these things have AAA or roadside assistance. If you don't want to learn, you have to pay other people to do these things. Not the jerk. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or his sister? Please let us know. Lots of people have roadside assistance on their auto insurance and they don't even know about it. Check with yours so you'll know. Or you can watch a 10 minute tutorial on YouTube teaching you how to change a tire. It's really, really easy. My boyfriend thought my advice to his little cousin about the industry was rude and discouraging. I truly don't see how I was. So before I even start, I want to say that I'm not a hater. I love the art so much. I wanted to be an actress when I was a kid as well, until I saw what it took. My father has been in the entertainment industry for 30 years. He's been a comedian, producer, television writer, actor, anything under the sun, my father has done it. As a kid, I helped my father a lot. Acting in audition tapes, watching his shows, helping him promote, reading his TV scripts, listening to his comedy bits. Me and my whole family even did an episode on the Discovery Channel. I have done and seen it all. My father is now a really great comedian. He's not world famous, but he has some videos that went viral and he's appeared on a few TV shows. However, he has shown me what it takes to become an actor. That is, to become viral. 
Multiple times, agents have turned him down because my dad doesn't have 50,000 to 100,000 followers. It was heartbreaking because my dad has this amazing rapport, but since he's not internet famous, he gets cast aside. Don't get me wrong, he makes pretty decent money now, but nowhere near Kevin Hart's status. Now I saw my boyfriend's little cousin and she was talking about how she is bouncing around careers. She's thinking about either becoming a musician, actress, or an animator. Her cousin went to Juilliard and has been on Broadway. She's a huge hero for her. I told her, honestly, as a person whose family has been in the entertainment industry, I would say do animation. Nowadays, they're looking for people to go viral, and it can be very difficult to become an actress unless you are a child actor. I also explained how people are getting turned down if they don't have at least 100,000 followers. To add to this, his cousin does not have a rapport. She has done a few musicals for her high school, but that's it. She has not taken any acting classes, she has not participated in an acting program, nor does she have an internet following. She's only 16, but I was just trying to show her the reality. Out of all that, I believe animation would be a wonderful segue into the entertainment industry. However, she still wants to try to get into an art school and build an acting rapport through her university. I said, alright, you do what's best. I suggest that you try to find an acting program while you're still this young. My boyfriend then tells me, why did you tell her that? That's not true. I was like, excuse me? Um, yes they are. That's literally why my dad has been turned down from several roles, along with hundreds of other actresses. He said, No, you can go to a university and build connections and become a theater actress that way. Being an influencer isn't acting. That's not what they're looking for. I responded, That's exactly what they're looking for. They want a fan base to buy tickets to their movies and shows. That's why they want people with a following. After that, I left. I was not about to have him mansplain to me a subject of which he has no experience. I wasn't trying to be rude to her. I thought I was just trying to give her the best advice. Was I truly discouraging? My degree is in speech and theater. I went to school with people who now have Grammys, Oscars, and Emmys. I know others with nominations in them all. I know people who made it to Broadway, know a guy who's a really, really big deal in the Marvel Universe, and I know a ton of award-winning writers. None of this means anything in terms of return on investment for a degree. And even if you get all those accolades, you can still be living in a box under the overpass. But you can't convince a young artist the hard facts. You warned her, now leave it alone. Smile and nod at ever musing of the dream. If you have the time, buy a ticket to her show, post a congratulations. When the inevitable comes, just say, I told you so, to yourself. OP, I've been trying to explain this. Tell me as a fellow person in the entertainment industry, do you believe that there was some truth to what I was saying and that my partner is being extremely naive? Oh, I left the industry almost as soon as I began because there's so much truth to what you're saying. I was in acting and music a very long time ago before influencing was a thing. Within the writing world, which I dabble in occasionally now, some publishers want you to have a large following to publish your book. Then you go through all of this to make pennies on the dollar because pay is not the same. Pennies for millions of music streams, pennies for millions of views on streaming services. Writing on a show now condensed to a few weeks versus months to the point you don't even qualify for health insurance because you either don't work enough or didn't make it. She would do better by doing exactly what you said, creating her own platform and going viral. She would at least keep 100% of the profits versus pennies she has to split five ways. You're not wrong. I teach theater to youth. The most difficult is knowing that even if a kid has that it factor, their chances are slim. If that kid can dance, sing, play an instrument, then it goes up. Add in them knowing more languages, being adorable or cute. Extra bonus points if they can actually act. The industry is tough as nails. Parents want the best for their kids, and I tell them to ensure the kid gets an education with a degree to fall back on. There is no guarantee. Never. So just go to school, work hard, and have your fingers crossed. I shot several pilots, was an understudy for a huge musical that came into my city. But my break never came. I'm grateful for the time that I have had trying for it professionally. I now work more in community theater and enjoy knowing that I always have a place here. You did your best. The most difficult is trying to explain to someone how hard it actually is, especially when they have no clue. And the fact that if they fall into the pretty category, they will hear how easy it is. I have a student right now. She got an agent has done some commercials and modeling. She has talent and the it factor. Her agent wanted her in LA for pilot season, which I agreed with. But she flakes out too much. So much so, her father has told her post-secondary school would be better until she matures enough and realizes that it is a business that needs to be worked on every single day, a lifestyle to live in. 
I also agree with him. She currently has no drive right now other than it can be fun for her. She says she wants it. But, and that's another thing, your drive has to be there. Every day, every moment you have to want to continue going like your dad does. You did your best, OP. It's best to leave it alone. Unless the cousin seeks you out for assistance, guidance, or support, just leave it in the past. If your boyfriend brings it up, simply tell him that you have spoken from a place of wisdom and observance and knowing. Continue to move forward. You're not wrong. Lots of people react poorly to being told that their dream or their family member's dream is harder to attain than they want to believe. Your boyfriend, and possibly his cousin, didn't want to hear the truth and lashed out because of it. They're wanting to substitute real reality for their reality that's in their heads, which says that the cousin is about to be the next huge hit with almost no work. If I were you, I'd wait a bit to cool down, then write him an email explaining briefly how the industry works and how you know that's how it works, and then explaining that his mansplaining was both wrong, insulting, and hurtful, and that you want an apology. Say you're sorry that the reality of show business is harsh, but that's reality, and him throwing a tantrum isn't going to change that. Hopefully your boyfriend will pull his head out of his backside. If not, then you'll have to figure out how to navigate a larger problem with your guy's relationship. Good luck. I got a scholarship for theater. One of my professors pointed out the average salary for theater majors after graduation was $6,000 a year. Most of us changed majors. I know one guy who didn't, moved to New York City, got a job at Starbucks. I saw him in a J.G. Wentworth commercial a few years ago. I work in entertainment law. Everything that came out of your mouth was the God-honest truth, and though you can never spare the determined, otherwise L.A. would run out of waitresses, you can mentally prepare her for life in that industry. If it was hard for me to just be a paper pusher behind the talent, I can only imagine how world-crushingly hard it is to be the actual person in the spotlight. I don't even wish it upon my kids or the kids of my enemies. Do us all a favor. Be a dentist or something. Update one day later. The argument made the house a bit heated for a while. Usually I come back and try to work things out or have a more understanding perspective. However, this time I couldn't. I just felt so disrespected that he would try to mansplain to me a subject he knows nothing about. Eventually, he came back and apologized to me. He said, I am so sorry. I don't even know why I tried to argue with you. I truly don't have any experience in this field, and what I did amounted to nothing. I said, listen, I understand there are a lot of things I don't know about. That's why I always try to listen and understand when you have a different opinion. But this? This is the one thing that I know for a fact. Why can't you just take my word for it this one time? It makes me feel like you can't trust what I tell you. He said, I know. And I was thinking about that as well. You almost always engage with me in these kinds of conversations, and it should not have been hard for me to just say, you're right, because you are. I am your partner. I shouldn't be making you feel like you don't know anything, because you know way more than I ever could. I guess I'm just used to always talking that way with my family and you. I am very sorry, but I'm going to work on it. So I decided to forgive him. However, he owes me a boba today. I don't know if acting is harder to get into than animation or not, but even animation, oh no. The working conditions with big companies will destroy your body, mind, and soul. And the competition to get into any of these better ones is insane. You have to be so driven to thrive there. If the cousin does try animation instead, I'd recommend her doing it as a hobby to see if she has what it takes. Or just go indie from the get-go. So my question is, why did almost everybody overlook the fact that OP was being a huge jerk to a young artist? I don't care if what they said was right or wrong. It's how you say it. And if you care even a little about the person, you think twice. If the 16-year-old is too sensitive to hear about this from her cousin's girlfriend, then she's extremely not ready for what she will hear in the entertainment industry. Whoever said to become a dentist is right on. I have a business degree and worked in management consulting for a bit. One of my projects was with a company that has a dental supply division. I got to learn a lot about dentists in the surrounding industry. If you have the drive to establish your own practice or get an equity partnership in a large practice, you can make serious money. If I could do it all over, I would have went to dental school. Well, what do you think? Was OP the jerk for what she said to her boyfriend's cousin or not? Please let us know. My wife cheated on me but immediately confessed and wants to work on fixing our marriage. My wife cheated on me four days ago. She went to visit her parents and while staying there, she went out with some of her friends. They went to a bar and had drinks there was a guy hitting on her the entire night. One thing led to another and she hooked up with him. Afterwards, she was horrified about it. She ran to her parents' house where she started panicking and crying and she told them what she had done. Two days ago, she came home and immediately set me down to confess. 
I was already stressed from work, so hearing this didn't help. I was enraged. Somehow, I kept all my rage in check and I asked her to explain. She didn't hide anything. She told me everything in detail. She was crying, but not excessively. I guess she understood that tears wouldn't change anything. She gave me her phone, told me that her parents know, and said that she would like to rebuild trust in our marriage. She will do whatever she needs to and whatever I want her to, but also that she will accept whatever I decide. For the past two days, I have felt nothing but numbness. We barely eat, and we haven't said more than a few words to each other. I sleep in another room, and I don't eat what she prepares. I cook for myself now, and she doesn't like it. It makes her even more sad. She doesn't go out of our room. She's mostly crying, talking to herself, or reading the internet on what she can do. Here's what I'm thinking. 1. The easy and probably best solution is divorce. There is no trusting a cheater, and there's nothing she can do to bring back time and return to how things used to be. 2. A somewhat optimistic but painful solution is reconciliation. She came clean on her own, willingly gave up her phone and accounts, and told the same story to her parents, which makes her somewhat trustworthy. Her father messaged me to think about it, but said he will understand whatever I decide. She's ready to do whatever she needs to rebuild our marriage. I thought about couples counseling, but I'm not sure if I want to go there. I didn't cause this, she did. One person destroyed this, not two. I don't know what to do here. This was the last thing I needed in my life, but here we are. Is it normal to feel nothing? Right now, I don't feel anything. It's like I don't care anymore. Update. The truth is, I'm not doing well. I'm depressed, and I have no clue what I want to do about my marriage or with myself, to be honest. My wife had her birthday two days ago, so I decided to call and meet with her. We met, and I even bought her a small cake with one candle as a present. She cried her eyes out and told me that she thought I had forgotten about her birthday and that I wouldn't want to congratulate her because I can't stand her. In all honesty, I felt genuine happiness and warmth inside when I saw how happy she was with my present. The gift itself isn't anything special or expensive, but I suppose it reminded both of us of better times. However, those feelings faded quickly when I remembered what had happened between us. We talked deeply about our relationship, our emotions, and our lives. The conversation was more emotional than I thought it would be. She spoke much more than I did, expressing how awful she feels about hurting me and acknowledging that she can't undo her actions. Despite this, she showed me how she's been actively working to improve herself. She's writing a journal, which is new for her, and she's reading extensively on reconciliation, watching various videos, and seeking therapy. She quit her job to find a better one, but hasn't had any luck yet, and now she's taken up painting as a new hobby, which I think is pretty cool. I think she's really making an effort to change, and I've seen a shift in how she acts. But every time her cheating comes up, she can't look me in the eyes and seems scared when she talks about it. Is she ashamed of what happened? I'm not sure. Is she horrified by her actions? I don't know. I did tell her that I'm happy she's focused on improving herself, whether it's for our relationship or for someone else's sake. That made her cry. I've never been great in social situations and I struggle to read people well. But from what I've observed, I think the gravity of what she did is beginning to weigh on her and I'm fairly certain it will only get worse. I did receive an update on her affair partner. She completely cut him out of her life, removed him from everything, blocked, unfollowed, after a major, really ugly fight. The dude bailed out after hearing that we were separating and that our marriage is falling apart. I guess he thought that she would be with him after she leaves me, so he ran away. He doesn't want the responsibility of a relationship. On top of being a cheater, she also got used and then disposed of. I don't know how she feels about that personally, but I think it's terrible. What her true intentions were with her affair partner, I will never know. No matter what she says about it, I don't think I'll get a straight answer. If he hadn't bailed, would she have chased him? Would she still be trying to reconcile if he hadn't bailed? Would they be together? Was her cheating a rash decision? Fear of missing out? Or maybe pressure? I don't have answers to those questions. She wanted to know if I'm willing to try again. She told me that whatever I decide, she will honor, respect, and understand. I told her that I don't know yet, because I really don't. I need therapy myself. I thought I could deal with this on my own. That I'm that strong and iron-willed, but clearly I'm not. I feel like I'm sinking deeper and deeper with every passing day. I could have been a jerk and told her to go buzz off. Your word now means nothing. It's too late for that, etc. But I told her the truth, that I don't know, and that I want us to stay separated until I make a decision. I also told her that our future is uncertain. I'm not promising her anything. Her work on herself, trying to be better and do better, doesn't mean I will take her back or give her a second chance. She said she understands and that she's willing to put even more work into proving to me that she can change and be a good wife and person. She is also ready to invest time and resources despite knowing that all of her efforts could be in vain in terms of saving the marriage, though not in terms of self-improvement. I told her that she doesn't have to prove anything to me. She betrayed herself first and foremost. 
I think this affected her really badly because I could see a change on her face, like something died inside. I told her to stay safe and left. When I came home, I realized that this was the first proper heart-to-heart -heart we had in a really long time. It's so sad that the circumstances of our heart-to-heart -heart are so terrible, sad, and even horrifying. If only it had been due to something positive and loving. I'll probably do one more update in a few weeks or months, depending on how long it takes me to figure out what to do. So sorry for you. I wish the best for you. If you move forward with staying with your wife, you have to give her total trust. Otherwise, I think the lack of trust will eat you up every time she's away from you. If you divorce, no one will blame you. Time to put effort into yourself. Can I suggest the gym, catching up with friends, movies, read, cycle, see a show, anything. Just get out and distract yourself. People say it takes a year before you feel better. It's going to take time. I have a friend going through a similar thing and he's thinking of moving states, starting a new job, meeting new people, etc. He's going to tell people where he is, but anyone who doesn't support his choice is getting cut out. So she went out for drinks, met a dude at a bar, and then ended up hooking up with him? Dude, you need to work on yourself and how to move on. All the good feelings you feel around her is only more reason because she had that all the time and it didn't stop her from doing this. Your marriage is over. You answered your own questions in the middle paragraphs. She chose to explore her options, greener pastures, but got used up and dumped. She's settling for you. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Trust and respect are lost. I keep meeting my birth mom, but she doesn't know it's me. She had me when she was 14, and I, 24 male, was given up for adoption. My parents told me about her growing up. I still have the letter she wrote me, and then she asked if they could give it to me. It's crazy reading it sometimes and knowing it was a literal kid who wrote it, saying she's sorry that she couldn't be my mommy, but she hopes I'm okay. She was open to having contact, but we moved from my dad's job when I was 11, and then it seemed impossible to find her. But luckily, I did. She's working at this small restaurant, and I keep going, but she doesn't know it's me. We talk sometimes, and she seems like a nice lady. Sometimes when she says something like, Do you want a refill, honey? Or uses another term like that, I want to tell her. I don't know why it makes me nervous. We talk sometimes and she seems really genuine. If it's not super busy, she's more open to talking about random stuff. I literally drive two hours to come eat at this place just to see her and it's like she knows me already because I'm there once or two times a week for the past three months so she always says hi with a big smile. But man, if she only knew. Update. Well, I did it. I told her. And yeah, it was pretty heavy. My heart was even beating fast. I kept trying to think how to tell her. Many of the commenters on my last post here mentioned writing her a letter just how she wrote a letter for me. Originally, that was the plan, but for me, it felt like I needed to say it. Oh, really quick, I want to say thanks to everyone for your love and support, mostly to all the birth parents out there who shared their stories with me. That's what really helped me push to have the courage to confront her. It meant so much, so thanks. Everything happened the day before yesterday, by the way. I did wait for her to be done with her shift, and that was when they were closing the restaurant already and waiting in the parking lot. We said hi when she saw me first, but then I told her there was something serious that she needed to know. First, I told her sorry for keeping it from her this long. She didn't react until I actually pulled out her letter. And she started bawling from here, like screaming and crying at the same time, and I didn't even have to finish the whole I'm your son speech. She just saw it and knew. It was crazy. Next thing I know, she's hugging me instantly, but then she pulled back and asked if it's okay to hug me. Of course it is and we're just there hugging each other and crying in the parking lot. It hit her hard though. Her legs gave out for a second, so I had to actually hold her up while she's still hugging me for a minute. What really got me was her saying to look at how big I got. Also hearing her cry made me cry too. She went back to open the restaurant up. She wouldn't take no for an answer. We had coffee, ate a slice of their pie, and talked. So much stuff that we talked about. She told me the second time I came to the restaurant, she got a feeling but for her it was hard to believe it was me, so that feeling she had was pushed way down. Because she told me for years after I was adopted, she saw kids that would be my age and used to think they were me. Then she would be crying in public. It really messed with her mind a lot and made her depressed, so she didn't want to do the same when she saw me, getting her hopes up like that. She says I look so much like my biological dad when he was younger though. We talked about him too. They stayed in contact with each other in case I ever reached out to one of them, so it would be easier to contact the other. I didn't have hope about finding my biological dad since he was never mentioned, so I'm glad they both planned for the future scenario. She told me about how they wanted to keep me, especially my biological dad. He didn't want me to be adopted, but he knew they had to because they were just kids. 
It took him a long time to get over it is what she told me. That's why he didn't leave anything, because he didn't want to believe he might not see me again. We talked for hours, until almost 2 in the morning, they closed at 11. She just wanted to know everything about me, but her main thing was, am I happy? Were my parents good to me? Did I have a happy childhood? And I did. I told her thank you for helping to give me this life. We both cried again, she cried the most. Everything was emotional for her. Sometimes she would look really happy, but then get sad again. After my 18th birthday, she was hoping I would find her. That's why she stayed in the same city. But since I didn't, she always thought maybe I resented her, wasn't told that I had been adopted, or maybe had decided it was better not to have her around. It made me feel bad for not telling her sooner. She told me it's not my fault, and I did right going at my own pace. Honestly, she's so sweet. The way she kept looking at me with the biggest smile, it made me emotional sometimes. Makes you think, how can someone who's been a total stranger your whole life look at you with so much love? It's wild. We learned so much about each other. She asked me if we could have dinner soon to keep talking. And if at some point in the future, if I'm interested to come over to her house so I can meet her husband. That all sounded really great. We exchanged numbers. After I left, she sent me a text telling me thank you for giving her this gift that she didn't even know if it would ever come. My girlfriend came over and she hugged me while I cried. I wasn't sad by the way, these were happy tears. Everything went better than I expected. There was still emotionally heavy stuff, but I'm still glad that we get to open up to each other. Update. Lots of you asked to let you know how it goes meeting my biological dad, and to say it was emotional is an understatement. I've been feeling so many things since this all happened. We met up a few days ago. Was originally supposed to be almost two weeks ago, but things kept coming up. Work, then I got sick, for days. But we made it happen. To be honest, this was more nervous for me, because I didn't know anything about him. With my biological mom, it was different, because I watched her from far and got to know her a little before it came out. I asked my biological mom if she could be there too, just because she knows him better, so it was the two of us waiting for him at this park. He was already crying before we even got to him. This guy is strong too, so he pulled me in for the biggest bear hug and crying. He told me he wants me to know that they loved me so much and he loves me. I lost count how many times he'd come back in for one more hug. This definitely got to him and he kept saying, thank you God, a few times. Looking at my face, the feelings, man, the feelings. We had so many of them. Hearing him tell me how much they love me, even back then. It meant so much for me to hear that, and not gonna lie, that had me holding him tight too. I'm sure everyone at the park thought it was weird seeing three people crying together. My biological dad said he cried so many times just driving over here, he didn't think he had any more tears until he saw us. When we were all sitting down, it hit me that my biological mom was not lying when she said we look alike. Obviously he's older, but still, wow, the similarities. He brought gifts too, which was a surprise. It was really nice. He told me I don't have to keep them if I don't want it, but he felt weird not coming with anything, and he's wanted to give this to me for a long time. One was a teddy bear holding a picture frame of him at the hospital holding me. He was 15 years old. It's still crazy to realize that. And then the other thing was a journal. The journal was stuff he said he started writing to me years after I was adopted. He was in therapy and that that helped him to cope, thinking he would give them to me one day. His way of still feeling connected to me. I haven't read anything yet, but some of the pages were his thoughts and like if he's talking to me. How he felt when they found out she was pregnant, then the adoption, everything going on in his mind when he first got to hold me as a baby. I didn't even know he was at the hospital too. It was not what I was expecting. It really got me. I read some more of what he wrote last night that really got me crying. I'm sad to think how much this affected them emotionally for years. Also, I think it's pretty sweet he wanted to write this for me. We talked about his own life, which was pretty hard, his struggles with home life, and the feelings he had about giving me up. Then he wanted to know everything about me, basically with the same questions my biological mom had. I made sure they knew they made the right decision, because my life was pretty great. He looked like he wanted to cry when he knew that, because that's all they had hoped for, and it was something he always wondered about for years. My biological mom left a bit after we were more comfortable so we could talk more in private, and so it didn't feel too awkward between us. From there, he told me stories about how he met my biological mom. Sometimes he'd point out stuff he had noticed about me that reminds him of her, or that we have similar likes. Example, I love eating mangoes. I can eat them all day, and that's what I bought when we bought snacks at the park. He told me my biological mom was obsessed with mangoes, even before she got pregnant, and while pregnant, she craved them even more. 
Just cool info to know, even if it's random stuff. It's still stuff we have in common, and we both have lots. We both like hiking, playing pool. He was a swimmer in college, and I was on a swim team in high school. We both love rock music, especially 90s. My biological dad was really open about sharing everything, like he really was getting ready for this meeting. He hoped it would happen, and he prayed every day to see me again because he had so many things he wanted to tell me. Overall, really good first meeting. I'm glad it went well. He's open to the idea of meeting my parents. After I told them about all this, because they definitely want to meet my biological parents again if I'm comfortable with that. Obviously, if my biological parents are too. Let's see what happens. I don't know how it's going to feel for me. They met each other before, before I was ever even born. But I never had them at the same place, so that'll be interesting. Me and my parents met up yesterday to have breakfast so I could tell them everything. My mom was so happy how it went. She actually cried too when I was telling them about both of their reactions. My dad was proud because he knew how hard it was the months after finding my biological mom and not really wanting to make contact yet. I'm really happy to have their support because it's hard not to feel guilty about wanting to know more about my biological parents. They gave me a really good life, so for a while, it's felt like maybe to them I'm showing them that it wasn't good enough for me and I'd rather have my biological parents. But they told me many times that they want me to do this for me and they know how much I love them, and I really do. Finding them and meeting them was hard, but it was so worth it to me, and seeing their reactions made it feel even more worth it. Still can't believe it sometimes. Is it just me or is somebody cutting onions in here? <laughs> do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.